Hello everyone, my name is Relax and Panic, and this is another reaction to the Monogatari series. It is Ovari Monogatari Season 2. And you know what to do, as always, if you want to see my reaction itself, just go down into my descriptions, follow the links, replace the circumflex dot parts with real dots, and enjoy. Once you've done, feel free to come back here and hear my thoughts. So, see you soon. For those that came back, welcome back. Okay, um, interesting ending and a great episode. Um, I really liked it. I mean, there's a lot in here. We um, finally get, I wouldn't say really much of a background about Oshinogi, but at least some ideas of who or what she is. So, um, I mean, there's a lot. Uh, let's go uh, for the Senjugahara and Araga story first, however. <laughs> because I guess that's the easier one. <laughs> um, I really liked that date. It was a nice date. Um, I like the fact that, um, as I mentioned already, she is a, a very educated person. She is heavy on science, on um, about history. We we have seen her in a museum where there were dinosaur skeletons. So that's a part. But then about um, the sky and the meaning of um, our universe, how it works. Um, looking into the stars, uh, they were wearing space suits and doing stuff like that. So there was, I really liked that. It looked um, like a nice and interesting date, a lot in it. Additionally, a bit of bowling and eating. And so it is not one sided. There was a lot of different stuff they did. And um, I think they enjoyed the time. It, it really felt like that. So um, I like the fact that they showed this to us um, very much. Um, and the fact that Senju Gahara kind of tried to win games by setting up um, ultimate prices, which were that the one that loses, guessing it should be Aragi, will have to do one thing um, without questioning it for the other one, um, which was a setup to get him to say her first name. Um, was nice. I like it. I, I understand it. I'm not sure if she really lost by herself or if something I don't know made her lose or uh, because the um she clearly seemed to have been someone who's good at bowling um and her being exhausted I don't know it feels weird um the singing thing she mentioned that um she never had such a low score so having Oshinugi in the same episode and mentioning she's something like um uh, the pr a principle of the of the universe, or she stands for some principles of the universe. Maybe just maybe she interfered there a little bit. However, in the end, when they were driving back, um, in the car, she got her will by just you know playing the card of um, being disappointed in Auragi, so making him feel bad, and thus he mumbled on words, <laughs> he stumbled, and he, in the end, promised do what she wants and she wants to be called by her first name so um i'm aware that um i mean that's a step from just calling someone by the last name to first name clearly of more intimacy of m being closer with each other um so uh that is clearly a, a gesture towards him that she well wants him to be in her life more closer Maybe even forever because she kind of said that or and he said that he will forever call her that name now. So this forever aspect is in there. This idea of um, using a different name than before. So a little bit it feels just a little bit like an offer for marriage or something like that. Or at least a life partnership. That's it. So um, I see that it's like the next step in their relationship. And she set it in motion again. So... Um, that's something we, I, I clearly see the first date was something she wanted as well. So she is the one in control mainly. But we know from Aragi that this is something he likes. Um, he was always the one, um, he liked being led by her. He liked her being in control and acting a little bit stupid and geeky. Him, I mean, he was acting like that and um, creepy. You know, um, we had those episodes where he was the full creep. And then there was this moment when something happened to people he likes. 
people he loves. And it is important that he mans up and he is a different one instantly. We have seen that. So um, it is not that she completely took control. He handed it to her as well. He is fine with that. That's the way they work. I, I like that. It's a, a cool team. The, those two are um, forming up here. So very, very nice. Um, there were some, some wordings in like that she said she just saw hell. Um, which is, as I said, a little bit uh, interesting because he just did exactly that a while before. Uh, yeah, a lot. And we have the connection of her being interested in um, stars, in the stellar signs of um, like Orion and or here it is Vega and so on and so forth. Um, or as I say here had the snake charmer. Uh, those are ones I don't know so much, uh, honestly. So Senju Gahara is interested in that. But we get an explanation about that. And as it seems, and there I'm going over to Ishinugi, um, kind of the feeling like there is more to that from Ushinoogi in A Dream of Aragi. Which brings me to Ushinoogi. So, she this time did not appear physically. As in some ways she didn't do in the past when we had the episodes about Nadeko's example. So she works in his memory, in his mind. She works within him in many ways. Um... She put herself in the position of Senjugahara. He mentioned it even that she's sitting where Senjugahara's place was. Um, she talks about those signs uh, in the night sky and puts those in perspective to the storyline, which is really interesting because I never thought of that before. Simply said, nope. So um, the idea that um, Kiss Shot is kind of like Hydra. Uh, like an, a creature that cannot die because it will always regenerate, as we know. Um, and how to kill something like that. Um, then the uh, snake charmer that cut a snake into pieces, but is um, kind of reviving things it shouldn't revive, he shouldn't revive again and again, uh, is clearly um, the one we have seen in the last episode that revived Aragi as well. So, um, and we have a crab mentioned, as we know, which will side or has sided in the past with the Hydra. So if you transfer it to now, that would mean that Senju Gahara would side with um, uh, Shinobu, very likely. So, interesting. Additionally, there was this, um, where I'm not sure if... Shinoogi is talking about herself or from the, the perspective of Senju Gahara there when she, men she mentions Hanekawa as her enemy as her, did she say enemy or adversary? I have to check I wrote it down mm. I can't find it sorry, a rival, okay she said rival, I mean for Senju Gahara you could say it is a rival um, and it goes, it, it is about Aragi um, I'm not so sure about Oshino Ugi. Hmm. I don't know. Um, it is a lot in here, and I'm pretty sure when you know the full story, there's a lot of foreshadowing here, a lot of informations to be taken out already. So, um, what, however, stuck in my mind is the question she, not this one here, um, she said, um, she mentioned that um, one thing who is Gain really going against? Is she really going Oshinugi? Is she going against someone else? Or is she going against Aragi? Um, and if so, why is he not aware of it? What is his direct position? Then there was the idea that um, whatever you do um, you want to do something right. You want to do the right thing. Um, and I like that discussion of her, that um, interpretation. You, It is not easy to do the right thing. It is even harder to do the right thing only. So I, I see her point here. So it's like um, when you try to... Do, there's one thing you see which is not right. And you want to correct that. It is still 
interwebbed with a lot of other stuff. There's other stuff around. So if you change the position of one little object, everything around is influenced as well. And that will have this butterfly effect. Um, I mean, it's it's uh, one of the big uh, questions. Time travel. We always have this idea. If you would be able to to travel through time once, what would you do? And there is this typical sentence uh, you can hear nearly always is, you want to do specific st stuff, and in the end, everyone says, yes, yes, okay, but whatever I want to do, I would go and kill Hitler. Everyone says. Or many says. Everyone is too far. But you know what I mean. It's like, there is this ultimate evil in the past. It would be good for the world if this evil, in the form of one person, would be stopped. Ignoring the fact that he was not a, a loner, he had a lot of people who did the work for him, so just killing one wouldn't solve it. But the idea is there. So, sure, let's say you do that. You do the right thing. Stating that killing Hitler would be the right thing, which is discussion worthy. So you kill him. What happens? No one stops Stalin anymore. And Stalin is running over through the world. So it is not easy. You Just doing the right thing and only doing it is nearly impossible. Um, helping an old lady over the street is the right thing to do, but you cannot do just that. While doing so, you will have to stop other cars. You will have um, to walk yourself over there and possibly something else, sorry, is happening. So it's interwoven in others. And that's what she's about. Um, and she clearly states... There will be a decision you will have to make, and I hope you will do the right thing then. And she even points it out further. In this question, what is the right thing when you have to kill someone? Now, that is not without reason. There is no coincidence here. He knows he will have to kill someone very soon. And she now, in the end of the episode, asks him to help her and accompany her to Gaen. There is a big fight, which Gaen prepared. The counterattack that she talked about. The moment when Gaen, however, why ever, wherever, wants to fight against possibly Yoshino Ugi. Um, and uh, I mean, what, she, what Gaen prepared for that is a massive amount of weapons of different abilities. So, she's waiting for something major coming the way. And Aragi being there is interesting. So, um, Oshinogui asked him to step out of the game. To, um, how did she say it? Um, retire from the... From the competition, that's it. To retire from, in the end, all of these supernatural things, I guess. So he had the option there. I think this was his option to just leave. And Ushini Ugi would have done it herself, I guess. And I see his points that he says he cannot let, uh, he cannot leave Shinobu or um, Achikuji alone. He feels responsible for them. He did not see the whole picture. As I, I don't see the whole picture, um, so I'm pretty sure it might ha there might have been an option that there would be no problem for them if he would have left, but thus he cannot be sure. He has to be in there. And Ushinu, uh, Ushinu Ugi mentioned that that um, he does not think long enough about it. He doesn't. He didn't reflect enough about it. Um, so. But, well, he's just a mortal, so what to expect? And once it's clear that he will not step out of this game, where he's a part in, a piece in it, as we know, um, then she asks him to come along and help her. So, I think there will be a fight, no question there, and it will be in Aragi to decide to kill someone or something. And his decision is vital, his decision is important. And as it seems from Oshinogi's opinion, maybe the most important decision in this whole fight. 
Um, and I don't know why and what for. So maybe he will have to kill Ushino Ugi, just saying. Maybe he will have to kill Gaen. Maybe he has to kill Hachiguji because she's back in life where she doesn't belong to. Um, so what is the right decision there? I mean, in the end, killing someone is possibly never the right decision. Um, because when life is over, it's over and you cannot undo bad things. People that did bad things in the past, if they become aware of it, are able to correct their mistakes. They cannot undo it, but they can try to make things better, to help others, to kind of balance the, the budget that they have in the end of the life. But if you kill them for what they did, there's no option for them to do any good anymore. Sure, there's no bad happening either, but um, there we are again. Who's God, you know? Who are we to decide who has to live and who has to die? So what is the right decision? Big question for Aragi. I'm really looking forward to see what his answer is. Um, Ashinogi still didn't tell us completely what she is. Um, I by now think that she is not in any form a normal human being or maybe even not a being of this um of this world in general she herself stated that she's in the end something like the principles of the universe or maybe the time of life and death there is like specific time of dying maybe that's why she's there um the specialists revived someone who was dead um, and were sentenced for it. They got curses put on them. As in the ancient myths, um, there were curses put on those who revived the dead. So that is something that already happened. Um, maybe it is Ononoki who has to die. Might be as well. I mean, if it is about the same thing still going, maybe. Uh, Gaen kind of revived Aragi, I mean, she didn't do it herself. She did ask someone to do it, but maybe it's about that. Um, there's a lot of, of um, well, the big question in the room is who or what is Ushino Ugi and what is the one thing she has to do now? It is, I think, in the shrine, but I am not completely sure what it is. But it is very, very, very important to her. Um, and that's why she's going, although she knows there's a trap waiting for her. So, what does this tell us about this person? Person. Um, her own life, her own existence is not as valuable to her as making this one step, this last step. Um, she is in many ways over. Uh, in the meaning of that she is aware of a lot of things. Um, she is partially male, partially female. We have seen both versions of her. So she is the idea of being a principle of the universe. You don't have to be either. That makes sense. Um, she wanted to help Aragi very, very often all the time. Um, maybe preparing him for this. Um... So yeah, I, I I could see that she's kind of I don't know like the uh, the one with who says it's time for death and if you um if you damage this principles of the right time to die or who's worth living worth living you know what I mean whose time it is to live then she will have to come in and repair it and um, it seems to me maybe just maybe Aragi is somehow the tool of her as well. I'm a bit afraid that um, by her saying, I hope you enjoyed the last date with Senju Gahara, that m it might be it's his um, the, uh, time to die as well. I mean, he was dead, right? Um, we will see. And we will see if it just goes like... Um, I mean, there are three options what happens now, What ignoring the fact what exactly this battle and everything is about. It will go Gain's plan. And Oshinogi will somehow be beaten. It will go Oshinogi's way. She will solve whatever she wanted to solve there and be able to um, 
evade this counterattack and uh, something strange is happening with Aragi. Or maybe, just maybe. And I could see that being an option in the mind of Oshino Ugi as well. She was able to educate Aragi enough to um, put his mind in, in such a state that he is able to find another way. I mean, this series from the beginning to now has teached Aragi how to behave, how to act, um, search for answers, search for, search for alternatives, be aware that whatever you do, it influences others. So maybe, just maybe, it will be his decision in the end. And it is about him making the right decision, the good decision, which hopefully will help everyone. Just hoping, you know. So, that's it from me this time. I hope you liked, I did for sure, and um, I will see you the next time. Until then, my name is Relax and Panic, goodbye, and out.